We'll talk to Fran Fraschilla, the ESPN college basketball analyst. He was on the call last night. Kansas, Kansas State, and this is how it sounded, courtesy of Learfield IMG. Silvio gets in the face of the Wildcats, who'd stolen the ball as he was trying to dribble off the clock. He posterizes the Cats, and now there's a scrum. Players from both sides oh, coming no. at each other. Oh, no. Now they're running into the handicap section behind the basket. There are fans involved trying to separate the Wildcats. And this just ends ugly as the KU student section jeering the Wildcats who are trying to get one more play. A emphatic block that time by Silvio De Sosa ended the game, and then Silvio kind of stared down at the Wildcat he just rejected, which I believe was Cord. Let's bring in Fran Fraschilla. He was on the call last night. Fran, thanks for joining us. Was there anything leading up to this? Was it chippy? I know it's a rivalry game. Did you see anything that uh, preceded this? No, Dan. Uh, the only thing is there's a common etiquette, as you know, in basketball when the team is up and uh, dribbling out the clock and the uh, the young man, Gordon, from Kansas State, freshman, really competitive, Chicago player of the year last year. <clears throat> he steals the ball from DeSouza. DeSouza runs him down, makes a great block, <clears throat> and then the DeSouza stands over Gordon, uh, and that's when the melee ensued. A little backstory here. DeSouza is the young man who has gotten involved, in, uh, Kansas involved, with all this NCAA stuff, as you may know. Yeah. He's not playing much. He's out of the rotation. It was in the game late. You know, amateur psychiatrist, I think he just frust was, is frustrated with the whole situation. And, and it escalated when he stood over the K-State guy. It was pushing and shoving. And then he went Mike Tyson on everybody. So it was a, it was a wild scene for sure. Now, I can look at this from a variety of angles, literally and figuratively, but when I start to think of the assistant coaches keeping their players on the bench, uh, you know, did was there a situation where the players were told to back off? I believe Bruce Weber, Kansas State's head coach, said, you know, hey, let's ease off here. We're getting blown out here. Yeah. Is that a Bush League steal, given the score of the game? Let me start there. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's uh, it's funny. Uh, I talked to a couple of coaching buddies of mine this morning and it's, it's, it's not good etiquette. Let's put it that way. Um, I get the competition. Bill, Bill self was fine with the play. He said, look, my guy's got to protect the ball. If you're still being guarded and you're playing a team where the coaches, you know, Hey, we're going to play a whole 40 minutes and, you know, we're never going to give up until the horn goes off. You kind of got to be prepared for that. But uh, basketball etiquette, uh, you, you let the, game dribble out i would have clipped that that play in the illinois play where the kid steps on the guy's chest yeah uh kind of christian leitner like if you remember back uh, uh duke kentucky and i would i would show my team that and say look you know we haven't gone over this play particularly but this is how we're going to handle this you never try to steal it when you're up and uh it, it's it's something that both coaches i was at the press conferences dan they were very contrite the schools it's an embarrassment the best analogy I can give you is that I've called 75 games in Allen Fieldhouse, and I call it the St. Patrick's Cathedral of college, of college basketball. It's hallowed ground. Imagine going into St. Patrick's on Fifth Avenue, and you're going in there to light a candle and, you know, sit down, say a prayer, say a rosary, and a brawl breaks out in St. Patrick's Cathedral. That's how jarring it was last night. It's a, it's, it's a least – likely place you would expect something like this, even given the rivalry because of the, uh, you know, the class of the Kansas program. What kind of punishment do you dole out here? Well, I was harsh last night and I said, I think the Souls is going to get, uh, I wouldn't be surprised if he suspended for the season in part because, and by the way, the hero here is assistant coach of Kansas, Jarence Howard, yeah. who took the, took the stool away from the Souza because you can only imagine what where we'd be today if he hit somebody over the head and someone's in critical condition. So thank God it seems like nobody was hurt, but uh, a major suspension will come down from the league office, I'm sure, by later today. And if it's if it's ten games, if it's a season, uh, they'll adjudicate it properly. I think a couple other guys on both teams will be suspended for the next game. And the sad part about this uh, is. 
college game day comes into Allen Fieldhouse on Saturday for the big. Yeah. So, you know how we are at ESPN. This is a, this will this will be top of mind. We'll be running the replays back more than the Zabruder film, and uh, and unfortunately, and really, I'm telling you, man, Dan, I know how much you love basketball. There's no place like Allen Fieldhouse. Yeah, the fans are great. They're class. Even in the rivalry, they treat the K State with relative respect. Given the rivalry, just an unfortunate situation that just spiraled out of control. I, I think in part because the young man's frustration with not playing much. You speak of uh, Allen Fieldhouse. I thought so much of the building. I paid for my own way out there to watch a game when Kansas hosted Jason Kidd and Cal. I just yeah. wanted to see a great game there, and I went out just to watch the game and, of course, to see you know Jason Kidd against uh, Kansas. We're talking yeah. to uh, Fran Fraschilla of the Mothership. This weekend, ESPN will be broadcasting Big 12 SEC Challenge, tipping off at noon Eastern, West Virginia, Missouri. And uh, then Iowa State at number nine, Auburn on uh, ESPNU. I, the thing I thought about today after listening to everything that happened last night, seeing the highlights last night is, is this enough for Bill Self to just go, I think I'm going to leave college basketball. You're under investigation. You have this. You, you're going to go into the college basketball hall. They're going to go into the basketball hall of fame. Yeah. Do you see him going and taking over, let's say, the San Antonio Spurs? Well, I don't see the Spurs. That's too logical. You know, I know the relationship with R.C. Buford, but, you know, I've told people, you know, Greg Popovich has got acolytes all over NBA, you know, yeah. guys that have worked for him. Well, why would why would he not take a guy? Who, and Bill is close to their team and their program, and uh, his son Tyler is a scout for the Spurs. I don't see that. Um this, this NCAA will be adjudicated at the end of the summer, so we don't really know how harsh a penalty it'll be. I mean, the, the consensus is it's going to be a very harsh penalty for, you know, for Bill and the program. And uh, But I don't see the Spurs, but I do think this is a – you know, it's funny, Dan. Um, everybody sees Bill Self. He, and, by the way, he's already in the Hall of Fame. Oh, he is. He's already in, yeah, he's a Naismith Hall of Famer already, and – you know, he's always 29 and four and they, and they've got great fans. And I'm just telling you, someone who's around him a lot, uh, you know, everybody's got their own issues. This is a major cloud, the NCAA thing. And, uh, and now this, my gut feeling is he will be in the NBA soon, but I won't be with the Spurs. I could see somebody like the Chicago bulls or, uh, you know, somebody that's on the way up and, and maybe not a, as bad a team as the Cavaliers that beeline took over. I will say this, the difference between the NBA and college in terms of coaching is like Spanish and Portuguese. They sound alike. They're two <laughs> completely different languages. But, but having said that, there are only a handful of guys, and in my mind, maybe three or four at the most, that could make the adjustment that Brad Stevens has. Bill Self is one, is one of them. He is an excellent, excellent basketball coach who, who makes adjustments which you have to do in the NBA um, he's one of the few guys I think could handle that my guy Calipari now you're not screaming at guys in the NBA okay no. I love I love John you're not going to do that Bill Self has a, a touch with players that I think would, would wear well in the NBA um, and I wouldn't be surprised if in the next 12 to 24 months he says you know I like a new challenge I'll leave you with this, um, and, and one of the reasons why I love having you on when we get closer to the draft is you're as knowledgeable about the foreign players, the European players, as anybody I've ever been around and always appreciated your insight. I go back to Luka Doncic, and, and I, when I saw his highlights, and granted, everybody looks good in their highlights, he always looked like he was just a little bit ahead of everybody on everything he did. He didn't look like he yeah. was dramatically ahead of them. Just got his shot off. Just beat you to the layup. Just, just a. But he's he's st he's doing that in the NBA here. How surprised are you with what Doncic has done so far? Uh, well, I'm 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 shocked. I'm shocked. I mean, I thought he would be good. I, I I I had eight and one, Doncic two, and most people did. I thought he'd be very good, Dan. I really did. But this is generational. What he's doing. I mean, we're, talk we're talking bird, magic, LeBron. You don't average 29, 9, and 10 as a 20-year-old. I think he turns 21 in February. And uh, he's the guy 
He's the he's the fat guy at the Y who you know when you go who's that guy? <laughs> oh, he used to be a really good college player, and you go, I ah, can't be that good. I mean, look at him; he's still got baby fat on him. I am shocked because he's toying with the NBA at 20 years old. It's not like he's going to be the next uh, Dirk or he's got oh he's you know Porzingis has got some potential when he when he came out. This guy is toying with the NBA. Think about it. I'm going to say it again: 29, nine, and ten every single night against the greatest players in the world at 20 years old. I, I, that, that, that's the first line in a resume who, if he stays healthy, we're talking Bird, Jordan, Magic, you name them. LeBron, that's how good he's already started his career. And Zion makes his debut tonight. You got to see a lot of him last year in college. What do you expect? If he's healthy, if he's healthy Dan, he's a monster. I think if 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 the, if the knees hold up, he's also generational. I would be surprised. I wouldn't be surprised if he gets 25 tonight. You know, I don't know how the rehab has gone, but if and when he's at 100, percent I do think he's going to be a dominant NBA player. He's a he's a cartoon character. If somebody um, hasn't when, seen his game and you were going to describe his game, how would you describe uh, Zion? Well, I would say, like, well, let me put it this way: when they do Space Jam three in eight or nine years, <laughs> he's the he's your he's your that's the he's the protagonist. I mean, you know what I mean? Like, he's a cartoon character. He's a freak athlete, gr uh, good skill level, great IQ for the game. And then, you know, I said this last December: a billion. We used to say a million dollar smile, right? Yeah. He's got a billion dollar smile. Okay, I asked this to Reggie Miller yesterday. I'm going to ask you: if you're Memphis. Would you take Ja Morant or Zion Williamson? Well, I take Ja Morant because I know what I'm getting. Uh, with Zion, the, the concern is we've never seen a kid this young, this in freakly, insanely athletic at 280 pounds. And the concern has always been, can he hold up over 10 or 12 or 15 years? I thought Ja Morant would be an all-star last year. Said so. Not This is not, you know, I'm not back, uh, backdating my opinion here. Um, and I know what I'm already getting with Ja. You know, in a league that values open floor artistry, like the Westbrooks, the Hardens, the Currys, this, this, is, this is the next guy. And so I would take the given versus what I think is going to be special in Zion. Great to talk to you, Fran. As always, safe travels. Thanks for joining us. Always a pleasure, Dan. Thank you. Fran Frischilla, ESPN College Basketball Analyst. For more Dan Patrick Show, tune in to Audience Channel 239 on DirecTV, stream for free on VR Live, or download the Dan Patrick Show app.